Um, I appreciate you being here today. Um, my name is Pablo, and uh, you mentioned that you're a physician. Um, wh what I've noticed is Virginia is one of the 37 states in this country that doesn't um, require medically accurate information for all children when it comes to sexual health. And I think, uh, I don't know what you think, but I feel like not just preventative medicine is something good for this country, but preventative education. And I've been, um, I've been HIV positive since I was 17. I'm a product of the Fairfax County education. And I, I just feel like, you know, one thing that we, we don't focus on enough is not just preventive medicine, but something to keep our kids um, educated. Thank you. Thank you so much. Wow. Pablo, thank you very much, and I appreciate the question. And, you know, I couldn't agree with you more. Education is great. Preventive care is great. And just several years ago, as, as you all know, I served in the Senate for six years. Uh, there's a curriculum already built into our schools called uh, Child Life, Family Life. And that teaches about the birds and the bees. Well, there were only like 9% of schools across the Commonwealth teaching that. So I came to the Senate and the House and said, let's make this mandatory. Let's allow people to learn about this. Let's you know, allow people to learn about access to contraception and, and all of those things that are so important. And their response was, this should, start, you know, this should happen at home. And I said, well, you know what? I agree with you. It should happen at home. But it, the reality of it is that it doesn't. And so we need to make sure that all people across the Commonwealth have access to this type of education. So it's a great point, and I think that as we move forward, we may need to make sure that it's part of our curriculum. So I, I thank you for that. I wanted to just pick up, too, on rural Virginia. Um, you know, I mentioned earlier that our unemployment rate had gotten down to as low as 3.7%. But if you go to the eastern shore, where I'm from, if you go to the south side of Virginia, the southwest and up into the Shenandoah Valley, we call that the, the horseshoe, they are nowhere near 3.7%. They have been hit significantly hard from the recession and they haven't recovered. So, so there are some things that we can do and I can tell you as a person who grew up in rural Virginia, I can speak their language. Let me tell you the first thing that we need to do. We're working on this now but we've still got some, some progress to make. That is broadband across all of Virginia. There are, there are too many pockets in Virginia that don't have access to broadband. Well, let me tell you what that means for a lot of reasons. If you're going to encourage businesses and manufacturers to come to Virginia and they say, well, by the way, how is broadband out in the southwest? Well, we still have a lot of areas that don't have broadband. They would say, well, thank you very much. We're going to look somewhere else. But think about our children. Think about this. A child has access in most schools to a computer. They have access to broadband, the internet at school. And let's say they're given an assignment to work on it at home at night. And they go home and they don't have access to broadband. How is that child supposed to keep up with everybody else? So again, if we're going to help rural Virginia, if we're going to help them rise up, help them be the same as other areas in Virginia, we've got to give them broadband. And you know the other thing, we all have these little bo black boxes, our cell phones. You know, I practice medicine, everything I need, literally, is in this little phone. Well, if I go to areas of Virginia and there's no coverage, I'm dead in the water. So not only do we need to make broadband universal, but we need to have universal cell coverage across the Commonwealth as well. You want me to take one more question? All right. Tora. You already asked the question. I would like somebody else. Okay. I love you, Tora, but you already asked the question. Somebody else, sir. Yeah, uh, actually, it's a tragedy. Yes, the question was, what about millennials? And I really appreciate the question because it is so, so important. Pam and I, my wife, of a little bit over 30 years, have raised two children. Our son, Wes, went to William and Mary, and then he went to Eastern Virginia Medical School. He's a neurosurgeon down in Chapel Hill, North Carolina. He had the opportunity for public education. Our daughter, Aubrey, graduated from UVA. She's a graphics design artist. You know, people like me, I'm, I'm getting old. I've got gray hair, but we're up here fighting for our future. And that's our children and millennials. So 
one of the things that I plan to do, my campaign is going to be grassroots. I'm going to travel around, as is my wife, the Commonwealth of Virginia. We're going to have listening tours, focus groups. If you all can help us put people together to discuss what's on their minds and how we can help them. You know, doctors listen. That's the way we get things done. We have to listen before we can come up with a solution. So we're going to reach out to our colleges, our universities, our community college, even our high schools, and sit down with people and say, this is your future. Where do you want to take it? How can we help you? Let's get involved. Let's get enthusiastic. And the most important thing, on election day, let's go to the polls and cast our ballot. So that's what's important. And the last thing I want to leave you all with and I do appreciate, I've probably gone over past my time, but uh, you know, I was just in church, so I'm kind of in the preaching mode right now. Um, but this election has importance for a lot, a lot of reasons, but probably one of the most important is redistricting, okay? Redistricting occurs in 2021. Right now, we have Republicans in charge of the House, we have Republicans in charge of the Senate. If we have a Republican in the governor's office, we will literally go back 10 plus years. We cannot let that happen. We have to keep a Democrat in the governor's office. So I ask you all to keep that in mind. Keep the fight going. Again, this is going to be a fight. I'm more than willing. I'm happy to lead the fight, but we need everybody battling this together. So thank you all so much. Have a, a great weekend, and God bless all of you all. Thank you so much.